Have you ever wondered what it would be like to walk in a field of flowers amidst all the varying colors and fragrances? If you love giving, receiving, or anything to do with flowers, you have come to the right place because we are here to tell you all about the most beautiful fields of flowers around the globe. In this video, we are going to take you through 13 of the most sought after flower fields around the world and tell you all about them. Let's start off with Lavender Hill Farms in the state of Michigan in the United States. States. It is one of the largest farms in the state, claiming to grow 29 different types of lavender. Bet you didn't even know there were variations of lavender now, did you? Well, they are one of the best in business for a reason. They also farm honeybees and have an old barn overlooking the field that has been resorted for event bookings. This place is the cutest, pastel-toned, picture-perfect farm of your fairy core dreams. The farm is open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m giving you peak sunlight hours for those gorgeous photographs for the gram. Psst. It also hosts various events like lunches and even yoga classes if you're looking for a casual retreat. Next up, one of the most popular flowers, the tulip. You cannot miss out on the iconic Dutch tulips when you're talking about flower fields. Kuchenhof, literally meaning kitchen garden, is one of the world's largest and most sought-after flower gardens in the municipality of Lees. From tulips blooming in all colors of the rainbow to the lakes and, of course, the windmills, Kuchenhof will provide you with an experience of a lifetime. If you're thinking of visiting this mesmerizing landscape that looks like it's straight out of a painting, we'd suggest mid-May when the tulip fields are proud and in bloom. Next on the list, we have the Hitachi Seaside Park. The park gained initial popularity through its baby blue eyes flowers, making it feel like you're walking amidst an ocean with their potent color. With almost 4.5 5 million of these flowers blooming in the springtime, the park draws attention from tourists all over the world. It also houses flowers throughout the year, including tulips and sunflowers. No matter what time of the year you visit it, it'll be sure to take your breath away. Next, Sunflower Fields, Italy. You must have heard of Italy for its vineyards and famous cuisine, but did you know that some of the world's biggest sunflower fields are in Italy? Tuscany to be exact. If you visit Tuscany in spring or summer, you will witness the sun beaming on the beautiful fields of blooming sunflowers. Tuscany is a multifaceted city. If you visit the sunflower fields at Grosseto, the fields run adjacent to the beach. And if you visit the fields at Siena, they run parallel to the historical structures of the city. Sounds like a charming city where nature and man coexist. And now, Blackstone Nature Reserve, Worcestershire. Let's talk about poppies next. Blackstone Nature Reserve was founded in 1986 in efforts to conserve and protect the country's wildlife. Between 2009 and 2011, the nature reserve planted poppies in a large number. Soon afterwards, the poppies bloomed into vibrant shades of scarlet, creating a beautiful vision. However, since these poppies are a part of the nature reserve, the foundation requests visitors to be kind to the flowers and not step into the fields. That won't be a problem for us, because the vibrancy of the poppies can be seen from miles away. Next up, let's talk about the autumn. Atacama Desert in Chile. So deserts are supposed to be dry, barren, and without vegetation, right? Well, not Atacama Desert because it experiences large spells of flowers through springtime. Apparently, there is a phenomenon known as desert bloom, which is basically the occurrence of flowers blooming amidst the desert. This often happens early on with the spring's arrival, when the area faces an unexpectedly large amount of rainfall. If you want to see it for yourself, the Atacama Desert in Chile is once such desert that experiences this climactic phenomenon. From Sighs, Don Diego's, and Lilies, flowers in a desert are a must-see sight. Up next, Almond Blossom, Central Valley, California. Hey, ever wonder where almonds come from? Well, in case you didn't know, almonds grow on this little tree called an almond blossom. Central Valley is known for its numerous almond blossom trees. In the springtime, the tree erupts into a transformative beauty when delicate and fragrant flowers emerge on the tree in beautiful shades of pink and white, almost making it seem like the tree has been snowed on. How cool is that? The entire area of Central Valley is surrounded by these almond blossom trees. If you happen to visit the area, take a stroll in the morning and let the petals of the enchanting almond blossom. And now daffodils, Lake Geneva, Switzerland. Flowers have inspired the legendary naturalistic poet William Wordsworth.
Wordsworth many a times, if you too to wander lonely as a cloud amidst a field of the graceful daffodils, Lake Geneva is the place for you. The sweet scent of the daffodils adds an extra dimension of pleasure to your stroll through Lake Geneva. The fields of golden and white daffodils can be spotted from miles away, making themselves vibrantly known in the Switzerland greenery. Daffodils are also known as the poet's flower. The unique juxtaposition of the flower in Lake Geneva's fields makes one dream. Up next is Madeira Island Flower Festival, Portugal. Madeira Island, a small Portuguese island on the Atlantic Ocean, celebrates the arrival of spring with a flower festival every year. The festival, of course, is centered around the local fields of flowers. There are concerts, dances, flower exhibitions, fashion shows, anything that can incorporate flowers in itself, basically. The most awaited part of the festival for all of the attendees is always the flower parade, known as Cortejo Algorico locally. On a Sunday afternoon, performers get ready in their extravagant dresses and flower crowns and participate in choreographed dances as the floats behind them act as huge floral backdrops. Sounds cool, doesn't it? Next on our list is Floriade Festival Australia. Okay, so everyone knows that Australia is famous for three things. Kangaroos, Vegemite, and Margot Robbie. But turns out Australia is big on flowers and even bigger on celebrating flowers. The Floriade Festival in the city of Canberra in Australia takes place in September to October every year, running for a four-week period. It displays tulips in dazzling shades of yellow, white, red, and purple tulips. Now, I know we already talked about tulips, but the world just can't seem to get enough of them. The city of Canberra has huge fields of these flowers in a variety of colors. Apart from the extensive flower fields one can trail through, the festival keeps the joy of both parents and children in mind, featuring live music, market stalls, a ferris wheel, and even baby farm animals. How cute! Next up, we have flowers that get us canola oil, canola flower fields. In the Chinese province of Gansu, these flowers make for one of the most beautiful sights one can experience in the world. For miles on end, these fields stretch into a mass of yellow flowers. Canola flowers, also known as rapeseed, are super popular amongst tourists because visiting the fields means witnessing the first step of one of the most common cooking oils around the globe. When the flowers are in bloom, the entire field is drenched in a sunny hue with the snow-capped mountains in its background. That is a sight you do not want to miss out on. Up next, botanical gardens. Botanical gardens are increasingly gaining popularity throughout the world. They are a type of garden where plants are housed, preserved, and cultivated. They are not only in place for scientific study, but also for the public to enjoy and educate themselves on various types of flowers and plants. It's like a physical walk in the park with the information of a Wikipedia page. If you don't trust us, pay a visit yourself. Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, Singapore Botanical Gardens, and the Montreal Botanical Gardens are on every plant lover's radar these days. So next time you're in one of these cities, pay a visit to their botanical garden. Next up, we have the Hallerbus Forest, also known as Blue Forest, near the city of Brussels in Belgium. Now you must be wondering why the forest is called Blue Forest. Well, that is because once a year, when the bluebell's flowers are in full bloom, the forest experiences a magical phenomenon, turning the bed of the entire forest blue. This happens during April each year, attracting people from nearby places to come and admire the blue carpeted forest. The bluebell flower is also known as a wild hyacinth. The bluebell flower is a bell-shaped flower, and when in full bloom, it seems like the flower is bending its head down in respect. That is why the flower is symbolic of humility and gratitude. That sounds like a sight one should not miss. That's a wrap for this video. Are you convinced that these destinations are worth visiting or would you rather Netflix and chill at home? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!